Hi, everyone, and welcome to a webinar that is going to tell you all about the Corporation for National and Community Services programs and funding. We're really happy that you all are watching. And without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to William Snow from HUD's Office of Special Needs Assistance Programs to kick us off. William? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you to those who were trying to watch the live stream. We ran into some technical difficulties, but we are happy to record this and make it available to all of you. So we're thrilled to be here today. This is a unique and kind of rare circumstance where HUD, not just one office in HUD, but several departments uh, within HUD have joined together to make this available to uh, each of our stakeholders. That crosses homeless assistance providers, public housing authorities, tribes, and so many others who receive HUD funding. We're thrilled to be able to talk to you about this wonderful opportunity and resource that's also available in the federal government. Uh, our mission of connecting people to housing and resources to maintain independence is so important to all of us. Uh, but in trying to fulfill that mission, we know that HUD's resources alone are insufficient to help us fulfill all that we need to do um, to, again, get our our clients, the people we love and serve, uh, access to these critical housing uh, and stability resources. So we're happy to invite another federal partner uh, to the table today to, to talk through how their resources can help us to, uh, to meet that common mission. And that partner is the Corporation for National and Community Service, or CNCS. Uh, today's webinar will, will focus on the opportunities they have for you as, as our stakeholders to um, unite in that purpose of addressing, again, homelessness or housing resources and helping those that we serve uh, have uh, access to resources. So without further ado, I'm going to turn the time over to Kelly Daly from CNCS. Good afternoon and welcome to this call. Um, as William said, my name is Kelly Daly and I'm with AmeriCorps VISTA and today I'm joined by several of my uh, corporation colleagues to discuss our programming and to share some upcoming deadlines uh, for resources. Um, next slide. Um, as the lead program specialist for AmeriCorps VISTA, um, I work with uh, our headquarters programs and now I'd like to let my colleagues introduce themselves. I'm Jan Newsom from Senior Corps. And I'm Arminda Pappas, the Grant Review Manager for AmeriCorps State and National. I'm Rich Smith, a Deputy Region Director for Programming with AmeriCorps and Triple C. Hello, and I'm Melissa McNeely, the Program Impact Specialist with VISTA. All right, on our next slide, you'll see the agenda. We're here to talk uh, an overview of CNCS. Um, and our programs. We're going to cover the big picture by taking a broad look at what our agency is and all of our programs. Uh, each of the program contacts will talk about their individual uh, programs and the resources they offer and how they work. And then um, we have links and resources to point you to so that you can learn when, where, and how to access the national resources and support we have in place. Uh, to support your efforts with homelessness, housing, tenants' rights, and all the myriad of things you guys do as um, organizations in your local community. Um, we're excited to share this information with you um, and hope that it helps you decide whether or not one or more of our programs can supplement your HUD programming. Um, so next slide, please. Um, CNCS and HUD um, have worked in the past, and some of you may have actually had AmeriCorps or Senior Corps members and um, participate in some of these initiatives. Um, for instance, uh, we've worked with HUD on community-based multi-sector initiatives like Strong Cities, Strong Communities, and Promise Zones to engage neighbors and leaders in strengthening their communities. Um, SC2, um, the place-based initiative, um, we had uh, AmeriCorps VISTA resources in Sacramento, California, Detroit, Michigan, and Youngstown, Ohio. Um, we also had AmeriCorps and C uh, members working with those communities. 
Um, Promise Zones is another initiative. Um, and in fact, we still have AmeriCorps VISTA in many of those communities. And those were 22 Promise Zones that were selected through three rounds of the competition. And they were each able to apply for five AmeriCorps VISTA members over five years. But again, that has lived past those five years and we're happy to still be in those communities. And the VISTAs themselves were responsible for also bringing in other national service partners. Um, one other quick example with the multifamily housing team, VISTAs have worked with local organizations to build local capacity, and engage residents in community life and housing decisions in privately owned HUD supported housing. We've also worked with another HUD initiative, Connect Home, about increasing the number of families connected to free or low cost internet. Um, we are in current discussions uh, about a new HUD initiative called the Envision Centers. Um, so this is a great partnership and we're happy to to bring it to more of the organizations working with HUD. Uh, next slide, please. So CNCS is the federal agency for national service and volunteering. Uh, we engage millions of Americans in results-driven service to solve problems, expand opportunity, and strengthen community. We provide grants and resources, national service resources, to thousands of nonprofit, faith-based, and community organizations and serve in more than 50,000 locations across the country. Our sponsors and grantees include many organizations you know and probably already invest in, including Habitat for Humanity, Teach for America, City Year, the American Red Cross, and the United Way. We also partner with much smaller organizations and public agencies throughout the country, like mayor's offices. Um, we have two branches of programming, Senior Corps and AmeriCorps. Um, Senior Corps connects seniors 55 years and over with the people and organizations and communities that need them most comprised of senior companions, foster grandparents, and RSVP. Last year, Senior Corps volunteers served 74 million hours. They tutored and mentored more than 267,000 children and helped 840,000 seniors live independently. AmeriCorps engages 75,000 Americans, young and old and in between, in helping kids learn to read and stay in school, rebuilding communities after disasters, connecting veterans to service, and bringing life and opportunity back to forgotten neighborhoods. Um, AmeriCorps is a pathway to education and employment for its members, while also providing nonprofits and um, service agencies with the resources to get things done. Um, we're excited to discuss these different programs in more detail um, so that you can uh, get more information and see if these resources are a fit for your organization. Right now, I'd like to turn it over to my colleague, Jan, with Senior Corps. Thanks, Kelly. Um, uh, Senior Corps is our nation's largest volunteer organization for adults age 55 and older. We have an extensive history that dates back to the Cystic. So these programs have been in communities for more than 50 years. Um, see, as Kelly mentioned, Senior Corps empowers older adults to serve their communities through three programs, our Foster Grandparent Program, our Senior Companion Program, and RSVP. Next slide, please. Our Foster Grandparent Program is our intergenerational program. Next, next slide. Next slide, please. No, oh, we're good. Oh, our foster grandparent program is our intergenerational program where older adults serve at risk children to help them get on the path to success. These volunteers serve at thousands of local organizations, including Head Start centers, elementary schools, any uh, juvenile detention centers, anywhere where uh, kids need support from an older adult, because the research shows that uh, kids really, really um, grow when they have the presence of, consistent presence of an older adult. Their service activities include native language, teaching traditions, 
They can do mentoring, tutoring, any um, activity that supports the child, our foster grandparents can uh, become engaged in. They serve, they can serve from five to 40 hours per week, and they may receive a stipend if they are income eligible. And by income eligible, I mean that they have an income that is 200% or less of the poverty guidelines. Next slide, please. Our next program is our Senior Companion Program. Our Senior Companion Program is our peer-to-peer -peer program that supports independent living for older adults. Um, these peers, um, healthy older adults, help their more frail peers with, um, with uh, activities of daily living. Anything that supports them to keep them in their own homes instead of having to move to an institution Senior Companion can provide these activities. They are like, like housekeeping, they can do bill paying, they can help them with grocery shopping, anything that helps them remain independent in their homes for longer, Senior Companions can become engaged in those activities. They can also provide respite for caregivers because everyone knows that caregiving is a really strenuous uh, activity and this respite allows the caregivers themselves some time away to take care of their own needs as like going to their own doctor's appointments or anything else that they might need to do. Like, senior, like foster grandparents, senior companions can also serve from five to 40 hours per week and receive a stipend if income eligible. And let me reiterate, income eligible is having an income at 200% or less of the poverty guidelines. Next slide, please. Our most flexible program is our RSVP program. RSVP volunteers can address a number of community needs. Um, we have a lot of volunteers who uh, conduct housing projects like their handyman projects. They can make minor home repairs for older adults who might need a little repair. They can uh, they build wheelchair ramps in case a person needs to needs to adapt their home to be able to get in and out once they become wheelchair bound. They can provide housing services for the homeless. They basically help other organizations create a greater capacity to solve issues that uh, need addressing in their local communities. They can even advocate for other other adults who might need some assistance with supportive services. Next slide, please. Senior Corps volunteers can serve as long as they want, as long as they desire, and as long as their health permits. Our average volunteer serves six to eight years, and the average age of our volunteers is 73. Although I should note here that we have volunteers who are 100 plus years old. Next slide, please. They generate tremendous impact for communities through the year. Last year, uh, there were 150,000 children tutored and mentored by senior corps volunteers, 365,000 frail elderly or individuals with, with disabilities supported, and 300,000 veterans received uh, CNCS that includes senior corps volunteer support. Next slide, please. One of the reasons that it's important to engage older adults is because there's a lot of research that notes the health benefits of volunteering, specifically for older adults. But that, uh, that research speaks to volunteering generically. And we wanted to know, we were curious about how uh, our program specifically support the health benefits of volunteers. So we conducted our own longitudinal study that really points to the benefits of volunteering in senior core programs. We realize that our volunteers always feel healthier, they're less depressed, less isolated, and, and being less isolated is uh, a really highly important issue now because doctors say that being isolated leads to depression 
and is as bad for you as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Senior, they also, senior core programs also provide access structure and financial support for low-income older adults who may not typically be invited to volunteer because people think, well, they're old, they don't really have anything to volunteer, to, to benefit by volunteering. But uh, our programs demonstrate that this is not true. The financial support and structure that our programs provide helps low-income older adults also remain healthier. So we really know that Senior Corps actually does work in communities. Next slide, please. <coughs> As for our funding opportunities, our foster grandparent and senior companion programs are historically legacy programs. Once an organization receives a grant for that program, they can keep that program as long as they don't do anything illegal or unseemly. But occasionally we have programs that relinquish. And when we have programs to relinquish, that's when we hold a competition. We currently have an open competition for foster grandparent and senior companion projects. The applications are due December 6, 2019, and you can find information at seniorcore.gov or nationalservice.gov uh, where you can find the notice of funding opportunities. Our RSVP program is actually a competitive program. However, we just completed uh, an RSVP competition, but we will have another one in mid mid-year 2020, sometime mid-year 2020. And so look out for that information about our RSVP competition. Um, and, and when we have these competitions, our eligible applicants include state and local nonprofit organizations, public agencies, faith-based organizations, higher education institutions, and even tribal organizations. So um, even though Foster Grandparent and Senior Companion does not have consistent competitions. RSVP does, so look out for our RSVP notices when you can see them on our website at nationalservice.gov. Now I will turn the program over. I'll turn the program over to our menu. Thank you, Jan. I appreciate that. Next slide, please. Great. Next slide, please. AmeriCorps grants are awarded to eligible organizations proposing to engage AmeriCorps members in evidence-based or evidence-informed interventions to strengthen communities. An AmeriCorps member is an individual who engages in community service through an approved national service position. Members may receive a living allowance and other benefits while serving. Upon the successful completion of their service, members earn a Siegel AmeriCorps Education Award that they can use to pay for higher education expenses or apply to qualified student loans. AmeriCorps grants allow organizations to more effectively address community needs by using AmeriCorps resources to support existing programs and also allow organizations to reach previously underserved communities and expand their activities beyond what they were able to do without AmeriCorps funding. But our AmeriCorps funding does not take the place of community resources that already exist. These programs provide Americans, young and old, with opportunities to serve <coughs> as AmeriCorps members in communities across the country. AmeriCorps grants provide partial funding to support AmeriCorps projects and programs. Grant recipients must contribute match funding to support the project. AmeriCorps grants are solely for program expenses and include an allotment of AmeriCorps member positions as well as the funds. The funds awarded by CNCS are directly tied to the specific number of members awarded. Next slide, please. There are two ways that an organization can become an AmeriCorps grantee and operate an AmeriCorps program. Your organization can apply directly to the Corporation for National and Community Service as a multi-state program, or you can submit an application to a state service commission. Single state AmeriCorps programs are implemented by organizations receiving an AmeriCorps grant to, a seat to address needs in only one state. These applications are submitted by the program to their state service commission, and then the commission submits the grant application to CNCS. Multi-state AmeriCorps programs are implemented by organizations that address needs in at least two states. 
These AmeriCorps programs have relationships with entities in different states that operate the local programs. Multi-state programs must consult with state commissions in each of the states where they operate to discuss their plans for future or current programming and to coordinate activities at the local level. This ensures the effective use of national service resources and avoids organizations bringing a project to an area that already has other projects addressing the same need. Multi-state programs apply directly to CNCS. Next slide, please. After award, CNCS's relationship is with the grantee, which includes multi-state grantees and state service commissions. Programs can have centralized or decentralized models. It's up to them. They get to decide how they would best manage the program. Some programs opt to centralize operations. For example, they keep funds at their headquarters and reimburse operating sites for expenses and require operating sites to follow standard processes and procedures. Other organizations choose a decentralized model. In this model, they may subgrant funds to operating sites and allow them to have their own processes and procedures. There are benefits and challenges to both models. Regardless of whether a grantee chooses to centralize or decentralize management of the program, they are responsible for ensuring that their headquarters, as well as all operating sites, service sites, and members are following all the applicable rules and regulations. Next slide, please. AmeriCorps State National provides several different types of grants. In general, we divide them into two groups, cost reimbursement and fixed amounts. Cost reimbursement grants are available to all applicants regardless of whether or not they have previously received AmeriCorps funding. Organizations applying for a cost reimbursement grant must provide a detailed budget with its application submission. Uh, grantees with a cost reimbursement grant also submit two financial reports to CNCS annually. ASN also, AmeriCorps State and National sometimes also offers cost reimbursement uh, planning grants. The purpose of a planning grant is to support an organization's development of a new AmeriCorps program. Planning grants are for one year only and do not support AmeriCorps members. During the planning period, the applicant designs an AmeriCorps program which addresses a need in their community or communities. Planning grants may also be offered by state service commissions for their states, or it could be offered by CNCS for multi-state or tribal programs. These are not offered every year. Our notice of funding opportunity will specify whether planning grants are available for each year's competition. For fixed amount grants, there are three types of fixed amount grants. However, the following information pertains to all of the fixed amount programs. Fixed amount grants provide a specific dollar amount per member to assert to an organization. Like cost reimbursement grants, fixed amount grants support only a portion of the program operating costs. Organizations are responsible for raising the additional funds needed to run the program. Programs are not required to submit budgets as a part of their applications, and they're not required to submit financial reports. There's also no formal matching requirement. However, applicants will be asked to identify in their applications the total amount required to operate the program and to explain how the organization will raise the additional resources it will need to support the program. Our current notice of funding opportunity includes information on the types of fixed award, awards available to applicants. Next slide, please. In addition to the types of grants, AmeriCorps State and National can also either award grants with competitive funds or formula funds. There are separate notices of funding opportunities and application processes for both competitive and formula grant making. For competitive grants, all organizations that submit applications to the competitive notice of funding opportunity compete against each other for funding. That means that all state commission competitive sub-applications compete against each other and against the multi-state applications for the same pool of funding. CNCS staff review the applications against the criteria published in the NOFO and then make award decisions. For formula, by statute, state commissions are eligible for formula funds. Formula funds are allocated to state commissions according to an established formula. Programmatic formula grants support AmeriCorps programs which involve members in defined service projects to meet identified community needs and can either be cost reimbursement or fixed awards. CNCS staff do not review these sub-applications and have no part in deciding which are funded. Commissions run their own state-specific competitions for formula funding, and generally this occurs in the late winter and early spring. Uh, potential organizations that are interested in applying for formula funding through a state 
would best would need to contact the state's commission to get information about how to do that. Next slide, please. So as you can see, there are a wide variety of organizations that are eligible to apply for AmeriCorps state and national funding. CNCS encourages organizations that have not received prior funding to apply. And the general practice is to award no more than 50 member positions to organizations receiving an AmeriCorps grant for the first time. Next slide, please. Eligibility to apply for state formula grants, as you can see, mirrors that of the competitive pool. Um, CNCS also encourages new organizations to work with their state commission to find out about requirements that those states might have in order to, in, in order to prepare an application to submit to CNCS. Next slide, please. So all of the notice of funding application, notice of funding opportunity and all of the application instructions are provided by CNCS and you can find those on our website, www.nationalservice.gov backslash grants hyphen funding. All of our current opportunities are available there. We require that organizations submit their grant applications to us through our online e-grant system and the website for that is included on this slide. Applications consist of a narrative, budget, and performance measures, plus a few supplementary items, and those are all detailed in the Notice of Funding Opportunity and explained in the application instructions. We currently do have a competition open. Our applications are due to CNCS January 8, 2020, but if an organization is going to apply as a single state, um, they would need to contact their state commission as soon as possible because state commissions will have a deadline that is earlier than that. Next slide, please. If you have any questions about AmeriCorps State and National, please contact americorpsgrants at cns.gov and that email is included on the contact slide at the end of this presentation. And now I'd like to hand it over to my colleague, Rich Smith. Thank you. Next slide, please. NCCC does not provide grants, but instead provides teams of young adults for direct service projects. This is the only residential branch of AmeriCorps. So just as someone would fly off to college or the military, they would travel to an NCCC campus and become part of this experience 24 seven, living and serving with a team that's like family. Like all of AmeriCorps, NCCC members must apply online to join the program. Every team has members from all over the country with a good mix of high school graduates, college grads, and people taking a gap year. If you were to sponsor or host a team to serve in your community, you would get a lot of people, but you would get them for less time than the other AmeriCorps programs. So instead of a few AmeriCorps members at your service location for the year, you would get a whole team for up to two months or more. Think big, lasting impact done in a short time. NCCC has two programs. One is called FEMA Corps, which features dozens of teams serving with FEMA during and after disasters funded by the Department of Homeland Security. FEMA Corps is an outstanding program and a great pipeline to federal employment, but teams are only available to FEMA, so today we're focusing on the program available to you, traditional NCCC. Next slide, please. As you can see, NCCC is divided into four regions, which serve as a coordination and training base for their teams. Staff in that region work with community organizations in their states to develop service projects. At the start of each program year, we begin with team leader training. Each team has a team leader who lives and works with their team. They provide administrative supervision of the members, help them with personal issues, coordinate the team's after hours schedule, and ensure they're ready to serve each day. At the end of team leader training, we fly in the members for their initial training. At the campus, we focus on building strong teams and getting them ready for intensive service. 
Then, we farm them out to community project sponsors to train and supervise them on the specific skills needed for each project. After their campus training, teams based at the Vicksburg, Mississippi campus, for example, might deploy to Miami to serve for eight weeks with Habitat for Humanity. Then, they come back to campus for a week of additional training and preparation. Then they go off again to serve with, and this was a real project, the Virginia Housing Alliance to conduct a point in time count of individuals experiencing homelessness and provide other emergency food and housing assistance. And so the cycle goes for 10 months. It is definitely an adventure. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. NCCC is a generalist program that does many different kinds of direct service projects. And each team does a wide variety of projects. And uh, previous slide, please. Uh, each team does a wide variety of projects and may have no prior experience in that line of work, but they're eager to learn from you. I think of NCCC as the ultimate discernment program, helping our young adults find their passions and open their eyes to new careers and degree programs. And the majority of our members, in fact, report that NCCC helped them find their career or educational goal. The most common type of project seen on the lower right is home construction, repair, painting, and other tasks with Habitat for Humanity, rebuilding together, or similar local organizations. You can also see the boardwalk on the left. Now, this is one of the most impressive projects I can recall, where a team tore out three-quarter miles of boardwalk while standing in a swamp and rebuilt it in only five weeks. Some of those members had never picked up a hammer before. Going to the top pictures, we also expand community gardens and other food insecurity projects, help cities with light infrastructure like painting house numbers on curbs, and provide disaster response. Our members can use ladders and scaffolds, as well as chainsaws, nail guns, and other power tools with proper instruction. Next slide, please. Okay, next slide. Our official issue areas that projects can address are listed here. Uh, previous slide, please. But they're very broad, so almost any need you have that a team can address over a short period of time is probably eligible as long as you can train, supply, and supervise the effort. As you can see in the last three bullets, NCCC isn't just physical labor. Teams have conducted point-in-time counts, as I mentioned previously, conducted community assessments, surveys, and outreach, school presentations, and parent involvement campaigns. They've made community resource manuals, databases, and websites, and even prepared taxes at VITA sites. Next slide, please. Almost any public or nonprofit entity can apply. And best of all, there is no fee or match requirement and minimal reporting requirements. However, sponsors do have to provide what is listed here. Providing lodging can seem intimidating, but many sponsors form a partnership with an area church, summer camp, university, retreat center, or find another creative solution. We can't emphasize enough the enrichment aspect of the 40-hour service requirement. Like all AmeriCorps projects, NCCC projects should include a wide variety of tasks that offer marketable skills and make a lasting impact. And supervisors should embrace the chance to educate and to explain their mission and the deeper purpose behind the work. NCCC contributes transportation, money for food, and all of the member benefits and coverage they need. Next slide, please. We have a two-part application process, which begins at least four months before the team would arrive. So projects need to be planned ahead. 
It is a competitive selection process, but campus staff are happy to provide general consultation and technical assistance. To obtain a copy of these documents, Read more about NCCC or connect with the campus, just go to our website and scroll to the bottom for this link. This is also the website where 18 to 24 year olds interested in joining NCCC can apply. We are always eagerly recruiting new members for this life changing experience, so please help spread the word. Next slide, please. If you have questions about NCCC, please email your NCCC campus at the address listed at the end of this presentation. And now, Melissa McNeely will discuss AmeriCorps VISTA. Thank you, Rich, and good afternoon, everyone. Last but not least, I'll provide you with an overview of the AmeriCorps VISTA program. Next slide, please. Since 1965, over 220,000 AmeriCorps VISTA members have served with a mission to strengthen organizations that alleviate poverty. VISTA serve in each of the 50 states and the U.S. territories. We send members to serve at a sponsor organization in communities facing poverty, inequality, and unemployment. Within those communities, VISTA members build organizational, administrative, and financial capacity. We have four core principles that guide our work and the work that sponsors and members accomplish in the field. The first principle is ending poverty. A VISTA's project goal is to move individuals and communities out of poverty rather than making poverty more tolerable, tolerable through short-term services. As a way to empower communities, a VISTA project engages residents of low-income communities in the planning, development, and implementation of those projects. To build capacity, VISTA members strengthen, expand, and increase the reach of the anti-poverty organizations and programs by working on projects in coordination with staff and volunteers. And lastly, it's important to create sustainable solutions for their anti-poverty programs. VISTA members build the capacity for organizations to address poverty long after they're gone. They do this by developing systems, establishing relationships, and obtaining knowledge which they transfer to the organization and the community to sustain over the long term, well after they've completed their service. Next slide, please. As I mentioned in the previous slide, the AmeriCorps VISTA program has been impacting individuals and communities since 1965. Each year, the program engages over 8,500 members in over 4,500 different sites. Through the VISTA members, sponsoring organizations and communities receive over $206 million in cash and in-kind resources to support the VISTA projects and corresponding events. The VISTA members serve closely with volunteers at some sites and are instrumental in training them and developing processes to build their capacity and sustainability. Next slide, please. There's a key difference between the VISTA program and other CNCS programs. VISTA only allows its members to provide capacity building to anti-poverty programs and organizations. Their work is meant to expand the scale, reach, efficiency, or effectiveness of programs or organizations. As an example, a VISTA could create volunteer applications and assignment descriptions, recruit and place volunteers into a tutoring program, and design a system to effectively recruit and utilize those volunteers. This system would remain in place for the organization to, lose, to use long after the VISTA completed their service. Other CNCS programs allow members to provide direct service. For example, an AmeriCorps state member could actually sit down and tutor a child. The AmeriCorps member would work directly with the beneficiary, whereas VISTA members do not engage in that kind of service, but instead work behind the scenes to build systems to support and expand that type of work. Next slide, please. There are numerous types of entities that are eligible to become a VISTA sponsor and apply for VISTA resources. Many of our sponsors consist of nonprofit organizations. In addition, faith-based organizations, institutions of higher learning, state and local government agencies, and U.S. Territory, territories may also propose VISTA projects. Next slide. VISTA service is a 12-month full-time commitment. VISTA members build the capacity and sustainability of poverty alleviation programs. 
There are a few things that you should know. The first thing to note is that VISTAs are members. They're not employees, interns, or volunteers of or with the sponsoring organization, and you should not refer to them as such. VISTAs serve at their sponsoring agency. They do not work there. And they receive a modest living allowance that aligns with the community that they are serving. So what type of individual is cut out to be a VISTA member? While the typical image of an AmeriCorps VISTA member is a highly skilled recent college graduate, a significant percentage of members are retirees who bring a wide array of professional and life experiences to their VISTA assignments. A member's life perspectives and experiences provide a unique lens from which they view the world and tackle, tackle issues at the community level. VISTA members pursue their assignments for a variety of reasons, ranging from wanting to make a difference and eliminating poverty, to learning new career skills and networking. Some VISTAs are also members of the low-income community your projects aim to serve. Community members are the best at working with and mobilizing their own community. This would be a great way for you to get community members engaged in, na in national service. As an example of what this VISTA members do, in Montana between 2009 and 2017, 212 AmeriCorps VISTA members served on the Billings Metro VISTA project to support nearly 50 community-based organizations. These members served to support the City of Billings 10-year plan to impact homelessness and to date have generated over $3.7 million to support critical social services. Next slide, please. There are two steps to the VISTA program application process. First, the interested organization submits a concept paper based on a quarterly deadline. CNCS reviews the concept paper to gain a better understanding of the proposed project and to determine if the activities and the organization are in alignment with VISTA's programming priorities. If CNCS approves the concept paper, the organization is invited to submit a full application. Your local CNCS field office is available to provide technical assistance and guidance during the writing of both the concept paper and the full application. Next slide, please. This slide includes some key dates for VISTA's FY 2020 Request for Concept Papers timeline. If you look at the third row, you'll see that we're hosting a concept paper webinar on December 5th at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. During that call, we'll provide more details about the VISTA program and the concept paper process. The second quarter concept papers are due on January 1st. We understand that this may seem like a short turnaround. However, most completed concept papers are just a few pages in length. After CNCS conducts a review, if the concept paper is accepted, the applicant is invited to submit that full project um, application. We've developed a VISTA programming guidance document, a request for concept papers notice and timeline, and a concept paper and application instructions document to help with this entire process. These documents can be found on the VISTA, VISTA webpage. Next slide, please. So please join us on the upcoming Request for Concept Papers webinar. Again, it's on December 5th at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. We're going to cover the entire concept paper submission process and provide details regarding sponsor and VISTA member responsibilities, such as project management, and member management. Next slide, please. We have more than enough resources and tools that will help your organization get more acquainted with VISTA and help you decide whether you would like to apply for VISTA resources. You can contact a CNCS field office to ask questions or to receive technical assistance during this process. And you'll see all of those links here on this slide. Next slide, please. If you have any questions about the program, please contact AmeriCorps VISTA, and you can find that contact information toward the end of this presentation. And now I'll hand it over to my colleague, Kelly Daly. Thank you, Melissa. <clears throat> um, now that you've heard about the opportunities and resources that National Service can uh, provide you, I hope those of you with needs for uh, skilled volunteers are thinking of ways that you could apply. Um, we're, we would also ask for your support uh, to help spread the word about national service by talking to your community partners about applying to become national service projects. 
and engaging dedicated senior corps volunteers or AmeriCorps members to support their work in addressing our nation's most pressing challenges. We would also encourage you to reach out to friends, family, uh, community members, and beneficiaries to apply to become an AmeriCorps member or senior corps volunteer to serve on those projects that respond to the needs of the nations, whether it's to mentor and tutor kids, rebuild a community after disaster, help veterans focus on homelessness, or work with community planners to alleviate poverty. Uh, AmeriCorps and Senior Corps are always looking uh, for people willing to serve, whether just a few hours a month or to spend a full year doing service. There are thousands of opportunities each year to choose from. Um, next slide, please. If you have any questions about the CNCS programs, on the next slide, please, you will see email contacts to reach uh, the programs. And at this point, I'd like to turn it back over uh, to um, William. All right, thank you. We hope you've enjoyed this uh, webinar opportunity. There, as you can see, are so many opportunities to take advantage of the great work that folks through CNCS um, do and the people that they, uh, that they serve. You see a common service group that we have. So we're thrilled to be able to talk about this opportunity and we hope that you will take advantage of uh, this wonderful, um, again, funding opportunity to identify people or ways to help your organizations better serve those that we are commonly working to, uh, to help. And with that, thank you very much. And we will post this webinar and make it available to you through the Internet and look for a listserv on how to access it. Thanks, William. Thanks, Thank everyone. Thank you um, for the opportunity, William. We'd like to thank all the HUD staff uh, for inviting us today. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day.